hello everyone in this video we will be talking about stress urinary incontinence in previous video we have learned that why this stress urinary incontinence is happening it is because of basically the weak pelvic floor muscles with the age and with the menopause the pelvic floor muscle become weakens that's why the, there is a loss of integrity of the fibromuscular tissue around the external urethrary meatus this is the normal picture as you can see here this is a bladder and you can see here this is a external this is the internal urethras me, uh, meatus and this is a external urinary meatus so what actually happens is this uh, fibromuscular or this is pelvic muscles are generally having a good tone in the young patient or premenopausal patient so everything is happening in normal range but once this muscle becomes weak so you can see here there is a bladder neck has been descended and that's why the external urethrary meatus is not that strong as it should be so the stress urinary incontinence is happening in this uh, females so what actually happens here what is the root problem here is descent of bladder neck so how we can fix that thing we can fix that thing by uplifting that part so when the descended bladder neck is lifted upwards then the correction of the main problem which is a descent is happens so there will be no stress urinary incontinence if if we lift the bladder neck so there are test clinical test to decide whether there is uh, stress urinary incontinence is there or not so the first test is bonnie's test in this test what we do the patient herself lifts the bladder neck with the help of her two fingers and when this two finger uh, lifts the bladder neck the, the stress urinary incontinence is corrected and if the patient performs valsalva maneuver at that time also or patient cups at that time also the urinary leakage will be not there so correction has been done in the second test which is a marchetti test in which doctor lifts the two alis for uh, alis uh, with the help of two alis forcep doctor lifts the bladder neck in this method also the urinary continence is corrected so we can identify that yes this is the very much problem another test for doing this uh, uh, diagnose of diagnosis of uh, stress urinary incontinence is q tip test what is this q tip test in which uh, we do uh, we just put a swab a tip of the swab this is the swab and this is the tip of the swab into the urethra of the patient up to the bladder neck so in normal condition in the normal condition what actually happens this is the bladder uh, this is the tip of this swab when we ask the patient to strain or to do a valsalva maneuver then the pelvic muscle will be again strengthened in normal patient it is already strengthened so the bladder neck lift will not that much only this kind of uh, this length uh, will be uplifted so the angle between the basic uh, the the first tip of the swab and after straining the tip of the uh, swab will be like this so small amount of lift is there so the angle between the previous and after uh, situation tip is not uh, more than 30 degree but in abnormal situation as you can see here this is the normal situation tip in which this uh, swab tip tip is like this but when we ask the patient to do a valsalva maneuver then the tip will be lifted too much okay because it is already descended in the patient who having a incontinence so if we compare both tips 
before valsalva maneuver and after valsalva maneuver there is a such a difference is there and that's why the angle between previous and after tips of the swab is more than 30 percent so what basically we are diagnosing in this condition with the q-tip test is urethral hypermobility so the urethral hypermobility is the reason behind the stress incontinence more than 30 degree angle okay so now is the management what should be the management we should permanently uh, uplift the urethra with the help of slings which kind of sling tension free vaginal tap the tension free vaginal tap will act as a sling why it is tension free because we don't give a, a very much tension uh, on the tap we just want to correct that thing not much there so we don't do we don't put a tension on that vaginal tap we just slightly uplift the urethra the mid urethral position it is like this this is the pubic symphysis this is the urethra and this is the bladder the vaginal uh, tension pre vaginal tap is doing what it is uplifting this mid urethral portion and the sling is attached to the anterior abdominal wall so it is not very much tensed so tension free and again this uh, upliftment of mid urethra will correct the urinary incontinence just like this this is the urethra this is the bladder and this is the marceline tap now another surgery is available for uh, urinary incontinence is colpo suspension but this kind of surgeries are not done nowadays because we have a very much easier option available like tension free vaginal tap so previously it was done the bursch colpo suspension in which we we just attach the proximal urethra to the cooper's ligament so this was done in past but at this point of time we don't we we are not doing this thing but again the very much correction will be only achieved by this kind of operations like bush colpus suspension but we at present we are not doing thing at present we are doing tbts okay so this is all about the management of urinary incontinence thank you